I'm liking the hair and the mustache and the poncho and the, it just I, I wouldn't think it goes together, but it does. Oh, Dude, I mean, honestly, works. I've been picking them all up. And then when I woke up first thing in the morning this morning to get to you guys, I was like, what am I going to bring today? I had the hair and the mullet, the yeah. mustache, but I was like, got to bring the poncho too. Yeah. It's Brings a mullet it protector. Do you, you guys see this? It. it comes up in the back and protects my mullet in case someone tries to run up and smash that. <laughs> it's like a half hood. <laughs> I don't know, man. I found it at a thrift <laughs> store. I was going to say, what'd you get? Your it? neck is extra warm. Warm. Buffalo Exchange down in Venice literally has gold. Like, <laughs> honestly, don't spend your time anywhere else shopping. Just come down to Venice Beach with me for one day, and yeah. I will literally let you guys walk home. So with where, okay, the Hacky sack your way to we have the to re, We have to recap where we were last, right? So the last time we hung out, you were preparing for the CrossFit Games, dude. That you guys was, were the first people to believe in me. We got there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thank I w- you. I was actually really upset Hell you didn't yeah. win. I, I thought you had a chance to win this thing. So you got to you gotta get, get us up to speed on what went down um, and then where you where you're currently at now well i would have been a contender to do some really great things but i'll be totally honest i was not going to be a winner like i wanted to go in and like you know be the dude who went up against the titan and punched him in the face a couple really good times Mm -hmm. and people were like well fuck he actually did swing pretty hard but he loses in the end Mm -hmm. i knew i wasn't going to win within one one window one year period and then from there I got invited to the games, which was a very new thing for their entire environment. Like they had never invited anybody before. So that was awesome. But they also changed up a bunch of other rules, which kind of fucked me in the long, honestly, fucked my opportunity in a lot of other athletes. They implemented the cut um, series to the games. What's meaning, that? So basically they invited athletes in and athletes earned and were invited. And basically I was the only one who was invited. And basically... If you weren't the top 50% of every single workout, you got cut. Uh, and I own at first workout, I was like top 30%, top 20%. So I did great. But then the second workout, I was back 25% and I got cut. Uh, and then the next workout was a workout that was like designed for me. It was a ruck run where it's like put weight on your back, run as fast as possible. So I literally was just like literally a day away from being able to shine and be able to throw that knockout punch. And I got cut. But in reality, dude, like the guy who took third in the open that year, which is a qualifying event, he mm-hmm. got cut first event. Like mm-hmm. people who are just spectacular athletes were cut just because it was like a roll of the dice. You didn't know it was going to hit that day. And CrossFit's an interesting sport. It's not like, it's like more like the Tour de France than a marathon. It's like you are the best person over the 21 days and the 21 events rather than the person who just freaking nailed it that one time. Mm -hmm. So you had to be a really, really uh, well-versed athlete. Like, you know, Lance Armstrong could sprint and he could beat people up in the hills and he just had the best overall run of the 21 days. That's what made him so special. Um, If you took that same Lance Armstrong type athlete to a sprint event, or just like a random mountain event, he may have lost that whole thing and he wouldn't be considered Lance Armstrong. So honestly, it was a very different experience than I thought it was going to be. But at the same time, we made it, we showed up, and we fucked shit up. What was the most difficult uh, uh, event that you you had to do? Well, I only got two events in. Event one was really fucking hard just because it was, I mean, damn, it was just gnarly. Like I'm not that great of an Olympic lifter. So you immediately Mm -hmm. start by doing a 400 meter run. That's in my wheelhouse, three legless rope climbs, 25 feet up. That's in my wheelhouse. Like I didn't use the technique like these guys do. They're freaking like wizards climbing up ropes. And then it was into 185 pound snatch seven times, four rounds. And to be honest, like if you give me a 185 pound bar right now, I'll chuck it over my head. But if you put all of those things in succession, like that's where it's like, that was like probably within, that's like 80% of my max. Oh, wow. And yeah, so I was just like, oh shit, but I made it. And I was like, yes, I did this thing. Mm-hmm. Next event was a uh, thousand meter row or 800 meter row into 70 shoulder press into a handstand walk for 140 feet. But you had to cover, I think, 40 or 60 foot sections. And I was the first person off the rower and the first person off the shoulder press because it's just capacity, 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 which I'm great at. And then that's where I just started to fall apart, dude. I covered the first 40 feet and I was in the lead. And I was like, I might as well try to win this thing just so I can secure myself and show people like I'm actually here to do something. And then, dude, I just went the next 40 feet and five feet from that cut mark. I fell. And I was like, okay, I got six minutes. I got six minutes. I went back, shook out my arms went another 35 feet out of the 40 and then I fell and you can just start to hear the crowd go oh (laughs) and I'm like oh fuck is this really happening right now in front of these people like I'm just this close 
and it just happened again and again. Were your shoulders I I, just gassed or what? Just gassed, man. The big thing that I think I fucked up on, and I'm I'm usually such a good student of sport, is I never walked on my hands in AstroTurf. And like the difference between walking on your hands across a hardwood floor, which I had done a thousand times, and then across AstroTurf, which is just that spongy kind of compression. Oh, interesting. Dude, I never thought about it. Mm. Wow, I mean, interesting. Just, just yeah, the dude. stability change. Right? Have you ever have you ever done like, I mean, dude, it's just like a, the way I could explain it to somebody is like do a deadlift with two dumbbells and then do a single lead deadlift. It's yeah. just like the, the level of instability that you have is enormously different. Like I can take... 200 pound dumbbells and rip deadlifts all day long. If you give me like 235 pound dumbbells for a single leg deadlift, I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. and it's just, if you don't train it, then you're not ready for it. And now, did you know these events before? Were you right. able to train before? No, they, they don't disclose that. No, right? it's literally the night, the night before, the hour before, the minute before. So there's no way to know. There's nothing. There's which nothing. now, which one did eliminated you? What was the what was the workout that day? It was it was that was the one. It was, oh, uh, it was I one. got basically through that. And to be honest, dude, like I can't prove this, but a lot of people side with me on this. We were not supposed to be cut workout two. I I base I basically was guaranteed the third workout, and. I think Dave Castro, who's a fucking asshole, uh, <laughs> I think that dude basically Shut when he found Dave. out he found out when I made it through the second cut, he immediately walked into the stadium with the rest of us and he goes, "Guys, we're doing another cut right now." And I just don't think that he wanted me to move on. And he knew that my one weak spot was handstand walks. And I, hey, listen, dude, he put his card down. I can't say it's a hundred percent, but I can say he's a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I stand by that word. So right. who who is he in in, in CrossFit? I don't know. I, Dave to... Castro is the director of sport. He organizes the workouts. Yeah. Um. You can read a book about him talking about how hard his job is, but all of us could do it. And uh, I'm just giving you a big shout out, Dave. <laughs> Anytime, anywhere, I'll fuck your day up. Yeah. Hey, yeah so I, he doesn't actually do them. He just tells no, he you just, guys. He just like, writes it yeah. down on a piece of hey, paper. They go like this. Honestly, I could give you guys all a piece of paper right now, and you could be the director of the CrossFit Games. It's well, that's simple. how we feel about the whole yeah, organization. Oh, he, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there he go. is right there. Yeah. That's the son of a bitch. You, event one, you know, cartwheels and, yeah. uh, you know, leg curls. Softball I'm toss sure and sprints. The, I'm sure he's not the biggest jerk in the world. He was a jerk to me. Um multiple times and it's okay I mean, really listen, like when he met you he was just a jerk he was a jerk to me like the first thing he got to say at the crossfit games he made fun of me he literally got up on the stage in front of all of the athletes that had just earned their spots from all over the world he's like congratulations to all the athletes who earned their spot here and then congratulations to the people who are given it and he just looked right <laughs> at me and i was just like i was like dude you're so lucky that i really want to work out tomorrow because i'd bend your fucking face up if they, <laughs> if, and I bet you that that gave you a lot of fuel, though, right? It gave me fuel, but there's nothing I could do. I mean, like I I I did my job on the first one. I didn't do my job on the second one, and now I want to earn a spot back to get the chance to do it again. Because to be honest, now that I went through the whole process, I, it's not something I want to continue, but it's something that I will do just to spite him. Mm. Oh, now, yeah. why do you, why do you think he has a problem with you? Because you're a likable guy. I mean, I, it's hard to understand or to see why anybody would not like you. You're pretty. Uh, Bring some entertainment value yeah, into the yeah. CrossFit. Exactly. Uh, what do you think the problem is? Well, dude, it was really interesting. Like there was this huge divide, which like just drew, it was very confusing. When I got invited to the games, a huge group of people online just started to berate me. Like just they were so upset that I had qualified through the games. Oh, really? Through the invitation. Oh, people right. were shitting on me, dude. I can go back into the feed and my Instagram posts, and you can just see people shitting on me. They're like just assholes about it and to be honest like i just played the rule that they put in the book it was literally in the book it was in ink you can't lie about it like there's no hiding from the fact that i just played the rule that was given they were inviting athletes outside of it and i think he was one of those people and like it's just a lot of people think that this is such like a holy event in the fitness industry that you know they didn't want it to be watered or dumbed down by some jock who liked to mud run getting away with it <laughs> hard work. somebody that plays an actual sport yeah, dear like, you yeah. come into our exercise yeah. studio and pretend like you know what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. by my standard man I told everybody who was competing against me I was like there's a very easy way to solve this just beat me yeah. like that's all you gotta do like if you work hard totally. then that's the whole point of sport I don't think people compete in sport to exclude people. They compete in sport to see who's the best at the sport. And that's all I wanted to do. I just yeah, wanted my 100%. opportunity to shine and share. 
And uh, that's what I do for a living. Like, I will literally, if you guys called me to a badminton tournament, I'm showing up <laughs> in my tight shorts. I'm going to smash that shuttlecock yeah, right exactly. in your face. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Whether it's the CrossFit game, Spartan race, powerlifting, I just, it's it's sport. I'm in love with it, and I'll continue to love it. That's a great attitude. Beautiful. Now, you were saying that there's, a, I guess, a slew of athletes right now that are getting busted uh, with uh, performance-enhancing drugs well, in CrossFit? Yeah, I was looking under that's your table weird. at all the supplements you guys have down there, and it just made me think, I was like, could I take those things and really not worry about what's in them? And I'm like, yeah, of course I can. They're just supplements. But somehow in the CrossFit industry, I, I guess this is a shit on CrossFit day, but uh, these athletes, go. it's dirtier than a, like, uh, you know, Tour de France cycling. These oh, guys, wow. these girls are like, how did I by accident eat tainted horse meat? I'm like, what was the chances that I was going to eat horse meat with steroids in it? <laughs> so I worked with this company who... Uh, Premier Sports are a great supplement company, and the CEO of it, Mark, he used to run a testing lab. So anytime someone got caught, I would just run it by him. I'm like, hey, this athlete got caught for this and this performance and answer. He's like, dude, there's no way for that to by accident fall into your diet. It just isn't possible. And also at that level of dosage. Is that the claim that they're all making? Always. Like one girl was like, oh, I definitely didn't take SARMs. I was just making out with my boyfriend, oh, and yeah, I didn't I know that, that he had just taken that. it. So what are the fucking chances yeah. that you guys are all mistakenly falling into the, you know, this realm of steroids? I'm like, you guys all have chest hair and you're women. There's something wrong here. Oh, wow. That's yeah. the whole, that's like the whole, so like, how, I, I how, got pregnant from the toilet seat argument. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, but your opinion, how rampant do you think it is in the games? It's terrible. Oh, really? It's terrible. I mean, dude, like, I'm just going to say you guys all work out a ton and maybe you're not all world-class athletes, but you've worked out enough that you know the body type of a guy who's natural and not. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just stepping into a gym and there's like a hundred people in the room that are like, you know, somewhat of a six pack, somewhat of shoulders, abs, arms, all that kind of stuff. And then there's this one person who looks like a bike pump was attached to their backside. <laughs> just like, <laughs> no, there's not enough power. Someone else help me pump yeah. this thing. Like, <laughs> like, Feed me my vitamins. Like, you're not. Yeah. Something's different about you. I'm like, if they all came from one village, I'd understand, but they don't. <laughs> right. And they all end up having this kind of like very dominant physique. And it's like, whatever, I'm not going to shit on you. Like if you get caught, then you get caught. If you don't get caught, so be it. That's how you want to live your life. Mm -hmm. So how does the testing work though? So, cause uh, we, we had uh, John Romano on the show uh, a couple years ago now. Right. And he talked about that. That's the, really the game in most all these professional sports, including CrossFit is not whether you take it or not. It's just all about how you cycle it so you don't get caught. Like, So how does the testing work? Is it random? Do they know when they're going to get tested? Like, Do you know how that works? It's random testing. Like, I think that once you sign uh, their waiver and as a participant, you are now filed under the opportunity for random testing. So literally like four days after I signed my paperwork to accept to go to the games, which was like beginning of June... I was in at an event and they literally called me and they said, hey, I work for such and such agency. We need you to be tested. We're here. And I literally went into a room and had to pee in a cup. It was like instantaneous. Do I think that they wanted to catch me oh, yeah. coming in dirty right away? Yes. Do I think that they tested like all their top level athletes who have just been dormant living in like some kind of corn fed town pumped up on the juice? No, they just forgot to, you know, test those people that wow. year. Wow. Yeah. I, do I think that these people are all dirty and that the business is dirty? No. Do I think that there's a lot of people going under the radar? Yes. Wow. Mm. And listen, it's not a very, it's an expensive procedure to chase these people down. And there's a lot of up and coming athletes. And then there's a lot of just standard, like they're going to be there no matter what athletes. Well, and it's also just like the NFL and the NBA and the MLB, it's good for television totally right? so mm -hmm. there's that there's that side of it that you know no matter what you say people like to see that the more superhuman they are the more eyeballs are going to be on the television watching it and to so. be yeah. fair they have caught quite a few people right so that kind of shows that they maybe are trying and they're publicizing it so that's a good thing yeah but i don't yeah. know about that i would i would make the same thing that they used to do with the mlb and nfl they don't always they just you don't do a pay, couple sacrifices yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah, totally. you don't you don't take your you don't take your holy you the know, scapegoats yeah you don't take the the face of of crossfit you don't take the 
the main guy or girl. You take a couple other people out to make it look like you're you're trying to enforce yeah. something. So now, now you're such a competitive guy. After that, are you like, I want to go back and do it again. I want to try again. Are you having any of those thoughts? Yeah, I definitely am. I, dude, I literally left, and then within a month later, I was competing back at Spartan Race. And I did this invitational thing, and I competed, and I beat the piss out of those guys there. I invited a couple CrossFit Games athletes. They were in my court again. Yeah. I did my job. And, like, I'm not saying that, like, I don't want to go back into their court. Like, I want to make sure that this is constantly a thing where I'm on their turf, they're on my turf, they're, I'm on their turf, I'm there. Because I really want to find out who's the best. Like, I, I signed an NDA, and I can't give details, but Spartan Race is doing something very soon similar to this in their own thing. So now they're back in my court again, and I'm freaking pumped. Oh, wow. And I, I'm ready to rampage. I'm primed right now. So it's like I want to, and the only, we always invite them over. Because we're like, just come on in. They're very particular and like that's their standard. I'm going to play by it. So I'm going to try to qualify back again and I'm going to make sure that I can get in. Um, is, is there a rivalry between obstacle course racers and, and CrossFit? Is that what's happening? Because that's kind of no, fun. it's just me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck you guys. <laughs> come in my yard. I'll yeah. show you what's up. <laughs> I don't feel like, yeah, I don't feel like there's a lot of obstacle course racers that, that yeah. feel they could go compete and hang in a CrossFit no, like you do. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I think, you're, I think just, you're the only one. I'm just filled with piss and vinegar. I yeah. just love it. I love it. How yeah. different Connor is Conor McGregor of OCR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How different is the culture between the two? Is there, Was there a massive difference or is it similar? They're just competitive people want to do well it's competitive i think the, i would say the majority of the people in both sports are very similar in their demeanor just like hey we're athletes like we're really lucky for the opportunity and then there's like you know there's always the, the asshole and then there's the quiet guy you know it's it's pretty similar i would say that it's a little bit more revved up in the crossfit industry because they get so much more media attention sure um, there, dude, like if you go and watch one of our events, it's, it ranges anywhere from like a thousand people to 10,000 people watching. Um, if you go to one of their events, their stadiums are filled with tens of thousands of people and they have like a hundred thousand viewers online. Uh, they just have so much more of a, mar such a bigger marketing vessel and like funding behind them. It's just, uh, it's hard to compete. So that also comes with a level of intensity and just, you know, behind it. So these athletes are a little bit more, uh, ornery. Have you been following all the drama that was has going on with Glassman in the last like ninety days? Yeah, dude, they certainly know how to screw the pooch when they do. Yeah. So, <laughs> so did did you have did you have any idea of any of this while while you were a part of it and going on, or is it like news to you? What was uh, what'd you think? <clears throat> I don't know any of the behind the scenes stuff to be honest. Like, I met Glassman. He seemed like a really nice guy. I think if you took any of our phones and read through it, we'd all look like assholes. To be honest, like, let's just. Let's just shoot it straight. That's true. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily a pervert, but I definitely say some ridiculous things between me and my friends. And I think he maybe did something stupid and then got scrutinized really hard for it in a really hard time to just be a person of significance in the world. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter who you are, dude. Like if you just take your phone and you get caught at the wrong time by the wrong people, you're you're in trouble. Oh. You know, I just uh so do I think he's a terrible person? No. Do I think he got caught up in a bad time? Yes. And he sold while his company was still worth something and they're trying to rebuild it with a whole new CEO and probably a whole new team. If I had to guess, the guy on the screen is probably going to get canned too. Mm. Um, I think they're going to probably have to clear out the shop and just bring in fresh new bl fresh blood just to really save the image of the company. Wow. Do you, now, do you think it happens? Do you think they can or do you think you're, they're going to take a massive hit from all this? I think they're going to take a hit, but at the same time, it's like, fuck, dude, companies have been reinventing themselves for years. Like Kodak cameras is like now like a fucking like health company. I actually thought they didn't exist. You know, yeah. when that their stock exploded and people were asking us questions, what do you think about Kodak? And I laughed. I was just like, that's an old, that, they went out of business a long time. I thought they went out of business. Exactly, dude. <laughs> so they're, they're, the companies reinvent themselves right, for right. sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they can save themselves out of this thing. I mean, it's too much of an exciting sport. Do I think it's going to take a hit? Yes. Do I think that anybody can take a, a beat up business and give it a little bit of extra juice? It will it will get back going again. Yeah. Now, did you change anything in your training after that performance? What did you did you go Afterwards? home and say? Yeah, like okay, here's some things I need to focus on, or is it the same? I think I trained like an idiot getting ready for the games. To be honest, I wanted to play on the court that they they had set up, and I started to train the way that they did. And to be honest, I just like I I think this is a broad. Uh, statement, not necessarily pointed at any one person, but I think a lot of CrossFit coaches are idiots. They don't <laughs> understand the direction and just progression of strength and conditioning. 
I think they all get a certification that takes 24 hours or a weekend long through CrossFit, which is a great education system. I already have like five certifications through them. But then they think that they're like a sports performance coach ready to enhance you and anything you want to do in life. <laughs> do five by five back squats and tota bars. Like it's just, it's not the case. And I started working with some co coaches and I started to read into the things that they were doing and looking into the programming that was online. And to be honest, dude, like I'm running probably five, six hours a week and biking almost double that some weeks and doing strength training. And I PR'd my power clean while doing all this cardio because I'm just on the basic strength and training progressions that are just universally known throughout the strength and conditioning world. And I'm using that and I'm just hitting PRs. I benched 315 like six weeks ago. I PR'd 300 pounds like a, a week ago. Like I'm just, I'm cleaning that and it's just snappy. And I'm like, how is this possible? Because based on the way that they designed it, it's not effective. It's too much. It's too sporadic. It's never consistent and continued. I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying from what I, I witnessed and what I tried to do. So if I do go back, I'm going to go in my own way and I'm going to show up the way that I like to. And obviously I'm going to earn my spot, as I said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you feel, you feel like you made a mistake by trying to train like them. It's just, yeah. did you feel overtrained? For sure, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, I can show you. I posted pictures yesterday of just this kind of like transformation through me and my athletic uh, career. 2016, I was 178 pounds running professionally for Spartan Race. 2018, I was competing in Tough Mudder X, which is like kind of like a combination of CrossFit and Tough Mudder. And I was like super strong. I could run a 15 minute 5K and deadlift 500 pounds. Like no one can do that on the planet as I know of it. And then I started to go more towards CrossFit. A year after that, I was 217 pounds, like very puffy and flamed and just kind of beat up. Like my middle back is still messed up from snatching. And I'm not saying that the programming hurt me, like my own technique and my own influence, like nobody put their hands on me and forced me to lift that weight. Um, but now I'm back down around 205, 208, and I can move all the same weight, and I'm, like, way healthier. Now, do you feel like that's because uh, a lot of the programming is probably geared to enhanced athletes, and they could handle that amount of volume and beating the body up in recovery? No. I mean, listen, I don't want to harp on, like, the enhanced thing because I don't want people to think that I'm just saying everybody who does it is, there, is, is on the stuff. I just think that this, like, like, remember, like, no pain, no gain? Mm -hmm. That yeah. is, like, so their motto. Yeah. It's like, if you have don't have, like, micro tears in every tendon in your body, you are not achieving your level of excellence. <laughs> like, it's like, it's Even nuts. though you're not moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That pain, pain is meant to be there. That yeah. inflammation more pain, is going to be great. Well, yeah. this has actually been the biggest knock that we've had. We've, we've, uh, we've highlighted a lot of positive things that CrossFit did for the fitness community and, and uh, you know, what they did as far as bringing back squats and deadlifts and, and compound movements that just people weren't doing. So there's a lot of positive things, but the big uh, knock that we've always had is is the program design, the, yeah. the way they've programmed. It's always been about intensity. It's always been yeah. based around that. And you know, we know from training so many bodies for so many years that that's a that's a failing method for like ninety percent of the population. You know, it's tough. Except for that, maybe the ten percent outliers that can handle that abuse. Yeah, yeah. you end up progressing in spite of. Uh, I think sometimes people do well in spite of poor programming, but because they do well. Uh, other people may think that's evidence like, oh, this is a great way to work out when in fact mm. it's not for most people. It's just too much. So well, now talk about the like Spartan race. Is that still going on with all the COVID and everything else? Shoot, dude. Everything's kind of been kicked in the ass. Yeah. Like I was saying, there was there's five people going to the CrossFit games this year. There was 150 last year. This Spartan Invitational thing, there's a very small amount of people going compared to championships last year. There was like 15,000 people, including the open classes. So... Everything has been shrunk down. Um, everything is just is kind of just challenged. And I, as I said, like I think that these companies are going to get out of this thing because I bet you gym signups are going to be bigger than ever once things are pop, pop back open again. And like race signups, like once it's greenlit, everybody's going back mm. because people are just sick and tired of sitting and waiting. So I don't think they're going to flop, flop. But I will say that my life as a professional athlete and whoever else is in that realm is probably not going to exist until like March or May next year. Mm. Mm. Are you pretty specific with your diet? Is that is that changed at all as well? I mean, when you talk about workouts, you you definitely sound like a coach yeah. 
Like it's very meticulous and planned. Are you like that with your diet too? Or is that a little looser? It's definitely looser because it's just, to be honest, like I worked with macro coaches. I worked with nutritionists. I've studied everything that I can. I continue to buy books. Like I just bought Paul Check's book and I'm like reading through that and gut understanding. Like I'm never going to quit on that. But to be honest, you could just put anything in my mouth and I'm going to survive. I may not <laughs> and thrive. I mean anything. anything. <laughs> 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 you guys want to go? If you guys want to go there, let's get there. Hey. No, I'm just saying. Like I, that was a sex joke, but I'm just saying. Like, you, <laughs> in case you were glad you, uh, yes. in case you were one pointing that out. Yeah. So <laughs> you, I can eat anything I want, but like my staples are right now just yogurt, rice, pasta, honey, um, eggs. I have like like the other day, like I didn't have any like anything well, see, else. Now you, say, you you act like you're not being mindful of what you're putting in your mouth, but you really are. I mean, those are all solid foods. That they you're are. Choosing. It's not like you're eating McDonald's. Every no, no, day. no, no, no. I it's just, I don't. It's because I don't like necessarily McDonald's. I'm not bad mouthing McDonald's, but I'm just saying like I I'm not inclined to wake up this morning and be like God. A McGriddle would be so hot right now. <laughs> uh, no, it's just it, it's it's not like this vegan. It's not this special carnivore diet it's not this special anti-inflammatory bioavailability i don't touch vegetables unless you have a gun to my head to be honest like there's just no point <coughs> i i just don't have time uh i do eat seaweed chips uh that's my guilty pleasure <laughs> okay yeah that's probably my only uh, it's, there's a lot of uh so in there. back to kind of sal's question around the nutrition then are you not even like <laughs> you know, cal counting calories or even measuring, you're doing so much movement that you, you kind of just, as long as you stay within those food groups and eat from that, you just eat when you're hungry. Four to 5,000 calories a day is just it. Okay. I just got on the uh, horn with my macro coach uh, and nutrient coach just like maybe like three days ago. And I was like, hey, I have been a little bit unguided for a while. Like you want to just kind of ring it back in, maybe have a pop-up, like just kind of a just sit back down and have a pop-up convo of what we should be doing. And I just went over it with him. He's like, dude, are you winning? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you feel good? I'm like, yeah. He's like, don't change it. <laughs> There's a good coach. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a very good coach. You know, talking to you off air, you have, it sounds like you have a lot of other practices that lead uh, to your success besides training and diet. One thing you said that I thought was very interesting is that you don't watch TV. And yeah. You don't really watch TV. When did that start? Why don't you watch it? I mean, when you're younger and you got like biker mice from Mars and all that kind of crazy shit and He-Man on the television show, I'm locked in. Dude, but <laughs> biker mice from Mars? What are you talking about? Do you remember them? No. What? And I remember everything. Dude, <laughs> just give me a little screen pull up. Yeah. Biker mice from Mars are like these like ripped mice that like, ride motorcycles. I do and not remember that. That's the oh most random thing I've ever heard. Gosh. Yeah. That sounds so awesome. Yeah, yeah. it is a freaking fun it out. show. <laughs> so honestly, like I... I think just because if I have so much time in the day, like I'm on my phone all the time. It's just work related. There's no reason to go on. Like if I sit in front of a television show, it's usually like CNN. Yeah, you can see the mice right up there, dude. Wow. They, they got like Harleys and shit. I uh, am watching that. Dude. <laughs> How did we miss this? <laughs> Tight <laughs> jeans. Dude, they're all jacked. Dude, they are ripped to the bone. Oh, uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, that's dude, great. they're oh. awesome. There's a video game. I just think that, you, you have your own television on Instagram. You can basically create exactly what you want to see. And I don't follow anybody anymore. Like, I only follow the people who sponsor me. I've got three, I follow three people. And I realized how much, like, terrible content I was ingesting every single day. Mm. Like, it was just, like, hot, nasty women that were, like, making me sweat while I was looking at my phone. I was like, this is weird. I was like, you gotta stop. <laughs> and then there's, like, ripped so guys. Distracting. And I'm like, fuck you, man. You're not as ripped as me. And I'm, like, looking at my phone. I'm like, I'm gonna break this thing. And then all of a sudden, like, I turn on the television and it's just, like, like tornadoes, people dying, Black Lives Matter, Trump is ruining everything. I mean, I'll show you what I woke up to the other day. This is what was popped up on my phone. It's, like, most the most fucked up thing that I've ever witnessed uh, on my screen Right here, Washington Post goes, the coronavirus has killed at least one million people around the world. There is no end in sight. Yeah. That is the header of what they are putting out yeah. there. I'm like, who the yeah. fuck approved that? It's real like, uplifting. I was yeah. like, I'm not going to pay attention to this shit. This is crazy. I was like, give me something. Like, Let's go back to reading Rainbow. Yeah. And it just is, it's crazy. That's so stressful. And... If I could just hang out in this room with you guys all day long and then go about my business and then come back, it's like we control this environment. But as soon as we turn on that screen, 
that's this portal of danger. Mm. So <laughs> tell a vision. I remember when Paul Check said, said that, right? Tell yeah. oh, a yeah. vision. Right. Yeah. Literally to tell you to be afraid. And you're totally right. I think unplugging makes a big difference. Do you have other practices like uh, meditation, spirituality practices, or things that are outside of the, the traditional realm of exercise and nutrition that help? To be honest, not really. I try to have like, probably the only thing that really helps me is I talk a ton. Like I try to sit down with people and I try to really go through my thought process with people regularly. Like I used to go to a therapist very often, uh, not because I'm a psychopath, just because like I don't want to become a psychopath. Mm. I That's want a lot to, of awareness there. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest, they made me go to a therapist like twice a week uh, and he even got to the point where it was court mandated when I was in rehab and stuff. But I didn't go through a therapist from the age of seven all the way until I was 20 years old, twice a week. And I hated it. But I also did understand, like, he's like, tell me about your feelings. It's like, why is that so important to you? Stop asking me about my feelings. Like, God dang it, man. And to be honest, like, that seems like a loaded question, kind of just like a weird way to open somebody up. But if you don't just sit there and process everything that's going through your system, it is going to grow on the inside of you and become internal baggage. And just, I just work through it with a lot of people. That's probably the healthiest thing that I do is if I have a fight with my girlfriend, I'm like, if we have to stay up until like one in the morning and process this shit, we are going to do it. And if I have a problem with my friend, like, like right now I'm trying to run this business right now. And like some people have been not so responsive and I just will call them out. I'm like, hey, listen, if you can't handle this, tell me you're busy. Otherwise, show the fuck up. And like, just that's probably the healthiest thing I got going on in my life right now. Is I've just literally got no layer between me and what I'm, I'm ready to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, meditation, I think, is too internalizing. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so before we got on, you were kind of saying you are hiding out a bit, like in the mountains here yeah. in California. Yeah, yeah. take us through undisclosed location. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not undisclosed. I mean, I've been living in that place in Malibu for years, but I will admit that uh, I, it's it's pretty funny. Like at first, I came back to Malibu and I was like, oh, I'm so excited to see people, and then all of a sudden, I was like, God, this this world's kind of shitty. Like people are starting to really just treat each other poorly. Like people screaming at each other for not having a mask on or screaming at each other for like taking their parking spot. It's like almost at this time in the world where people should come together and support each other. People are almost becoming more abrasive and hostile. Mm -hmm. And so now like at first it started out where I'd come down every single day and get my groceries and like say hi to a couple people. And then it would go like by two days where I'd get enough groceries to not come down. And then all of a sudden... My girlfriend goes to work every day. I'm like, bring home groceries. I'm not coming down. <laughs> and I am at the point now where it's like, I'm kind of just waiting it out. I'm not any different. I'm not trying to avoid people. But at the same time, I'm not trying to include things that aren't necessary. And I don't think that it's going to last like this forever. But my intentions are so focused right now that I just can't allow myself to somehow absorb any of the stress and anxiety and anger that's being passed around in the world right now. Like it hurt my heart the other day. I had to go into Los Angeles and go to a meeting and there was just like these homeless villages. And I don't want these people to be living in the streets at all, but like the, the, the people screaming at each other mm -hmm. and like the people with the signs, like stepping in front of cars and shaking the signs so that they have to see what they have written on the sign. And I was like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not on your team and ready to shake a sign with you, but it doesn't mean that you have to violently put your opinions and energy into my life. And that's what the world's becoming right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to say that I'm any better than anybody else, but I will remove myself from the playing field if it means that less problems are in my life and in their life. Because I know that if someone gets in my face at some point, like it could potentially be bad. Not necessarily violent, but I'm just waiting for myself to pop. Mm. Yeah, mm. That's yeah that's, so, I, I think that's good uh, boundaries uh, within yourself. I think it's an important practice. So what are what are your intentions right now? What it, what's what's on the horizon? What are you focused on? Uh, to be honest, like my biggest focus this year was writing my book, and I was really cranking it out hard, and I was doing great, and uh, I was really passionately loving the idea of sharing what I'd learned and experienced over the past, like you know, 
I'm only been alive for three decades, but at least there's been a dense part of that that I really wanted to share with people because I feel like there's something to be gained. Um, and then all of a sudden, kind of this COVID thing just kept on getting hit more and more and more. And I was like, whoa, I was like, honestly, I was like, this is not going to get any better. So I sat down with a team of people and I told them that I was, I, I was like, I'm going to put on an event to raise some money for all the athletes who are losing it all the people who have been fired and furloughed in the industry, all the people who have been, all the people who don't have direction in their lives. So I, I decided to start that business. And I just like, I was like, I think if I really just put my head to the gr like grindstone on this thing, I could do something that's going to shift the entire environment. And honestly, dude, like I, I keep myself in my room on this project all day long. And like you guys are like the first people I'm seeing this week. And then I'm going right back to Malibu and I'm getting back to business. And I think by the end of it, like uh, it's, I'm going to end up winning this year rather than losing it. Can you, can you talk a little bit about this? So you're, you're putting something together to raise money for people who, because the fitness space and the competitive uh, athletic space is really taking a big hit. Uh, totally. COVID. Yeah. Huge hit. I mean, we know people who own gyms um, and they're just totally screwed. Uh, so uh, can you talk a little bit more about this? Yeah, totally. Uh, just like, Originally, it started because I was like, whoa, everything's getting canceled. Then all of a sudden, I'm talking to my friends who owns gyms, and they're like, dude, everything, like, no, none of my members want to come in. And all of a sudden, I'm talking to my friends who are coaches, and they're like, dude, none of my, all my athletes are dropping off. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like everybody I'm knowing around me is getting hit, and this is going down fast. So I was just like, all right. I'm going to start an event very much similar to the CrossFit Open that's basically just like uh, would find the fittest OCR athletes in the world, the fittest in, uh, endurance athlete in the world. And we created this event called OCR Stars. I put $30,000 of my own money into it. My brother gave me $30,000. We said, like, if we're going to start this thing, we are going to put our own money behind it because, you know, I've lived my entire career for the past 10 years and people are just giving me tens of thousands of dollars to wear a t-shirt and travel around the world for them. People have literally given me my dream on a silver platter. And I was like, I'm literally watching all the people who have helped me out and all the people who have been by my side for the past 10 years, like literally go up and smoke. So I was like, I got to do something. Some of this money that I've been saving up has directly come from these people. So I was like, I got to do something. And eventually, uh, starting around July 4th, my brother and I sat down. He's like, do it, dude. Let's light this thing up. And we decided we were going to launch an event starting in November 2nd called OCR Stars. Four weeks, four workouts. And it's all can be done from the safety of your own home or in a gym like your guys own. If you guys were like a host gym, you basically have all the equipment here that basically people could come and use it because they don't have it at home. And we were basically going to qualify people for one, one of our championships physically. OCRWC has partnered with us. You can actually compete and qualify for the world championships next year through us. Two, we are going to give people the opportunity to compete for cash again. Like, I want people to be able to have their livings earned again. Mm. I'm like, if you guys are working out all the time, I was like, I'm giving you a chance right now. Like, we've immediately put down a $31,000 cash prize, uh, prize purse, and we're going all the way up. If we hit our numbers, we're going to give away $140,000 to athletes. Wow, that's awesome. great. Yeah. And I, I literally am traveling around, talking to gyms, getting everything going, and we're basically going to put on a pro show for four weeks every Monday when we launch the events. We're going to fly pros in and put on like a in like a you know basically from your screen to your phone to watch a professional event. Very cool. So all the bases are covered. It's a TV show. It's an event for people and a fundraiser. And uh, you know we are we're cranking every single day, bringing on great sponsors, great signups, and I'm fucking pumped. How are you driving revenue to it? Are, can people donate to the cause or what's it look like? I'm basically telling anybody, here are your options. It's either you're an athlete and you want to sign up and participate or you're a supporter and you want to sign up and donate. It's $30 to sign up. And, you know, if you want to, you guys can sign up and also buy a T-shirt, which is another $30. I'm literally telling everybody who's listening to this right now, it's like we are taking the money we are earning and we are putting it into the cash prizes as an athlete. It's like we just brought on a sponsor for $10,000. I hired two people to help me cold call gyms and bring things up. Like we're just trying to get people in the industry working again, helped out. So Very if you cool, are listening man. to this and you love working out, it's an awesome opportunity. Two runs outside and two gym workouts inside. And, uh, you know, it's four weeks of your life to just kind of find out who, what you're made of and uh, really kind of be able to help a good cause and support our sport for going into 2021 stronger. That's awesome. What Beautiful. a great way to give back. Now, you're, you're, you know, like you just said, one of the more successful, I said, you know, athletes in that space, monetarily speaking. Have you had to change any of your strategies or, or you know, pivot 
in order to continue to earn because it's, things have changed so much since COVID? Dude, I was totally fucked. In one week, one to two weeks, I was going from making almost $400,000 for the year guaranteed um, earning as a company. I wouldn't go that right into my pocket. I have a bunch of employees who help me run my business. But it, we, Hunter McIntyre, McIntyre Media generated that much money. Within two weeks, we went down to $36,000. Wow. Ooh. Yes. I have a manager. I have a finance team. I have my buddy, Benny, who runs all the gym, um, all my uh, fitness app stuff. And it's like, I not only am I working myself to have to also pay my own bills, like I, I'm working with other people. And it's not like these people completely depend on me. But I was like, we worked for years to build this thing up. Like, we worked so hard. Like, Augie has been my manager since I was a model back when I was uh, 20 years old. He's been helping manage my whole career for years. And, like, literally, I'm sitting there and I'm getting calls by my sponsors like, we have to cut you loose, Hunter. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I get it. I'm a non-essential. Mm. Like, I'm not boxing things up. I'm not doing anything for you guys on the daily. I'm just more of a, like, a flat, like, you know, someone carrying the flag for you guys when it goes to events. And I literally got taken down to less than 10%. And Ooh. I was like, whoa. Damn. And, uh, dude, it was just intense. Like I, you know, I have my normal expenses, dude. Like I just went through with my, uh, finance guy. Like I spend $3,000 a month on food and I'm not going out and buying like Dom Perignon and like, you know, ribeyes that have been like massaged by a Japanese man. Like it's like, these are, those are delicious. These are fucking nice, yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. Like I'm just eating things like yogurt and chicken kebabs and stuff like the rest of us, but I just eat at a four, capacity. Yeah, four or 5,000 calories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I eat at the capacity of just, you know, a handful of people rather than one. So it was intense, man. And like, you know, not to go back to my business, but I realized that every other athlete that I know is getting hit the same way. It's not like all of a sudden, like I'm at the top of the list. It, the people below me got calls before I did. And I'm like, holy shit, this is going to be crazy. And I, I, I had a savings account, so I'm going to be able to like kind of survive this score, storm and bunker down. But the reality is, uh, it's a totally changed industry, man. Like the fitness industry, I think got hit almost harder than anything else. I would agree. Yeah, we yeah. feel that way too. I would 100 percent agree. But the demand for fitness is still high. Uh, people still want to work out. It's just different, you know. Um, I know trainers that lost uh, almost all their business, and I know other trainers who were able to effectively pivot to online coaching and even in-home training because there's still people that want – and they're doing pretty well. But if you're not ready to pivot or unable to pivot and you didn't have enough money to carry you uh, into that, uh, boy, what a tough position to be in. Did you figure out any other ways to, to, to generate more revenue during this process? Dude, I immediately sat down and I was like, I am starting back up my training company. Two years ago, I started a company called House, Hunter's Academy of Strength, and I was just like giving people one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have eight certifications, getting my ninth one now, and I read books on st like, you know, working out all day long. I was like, I love it. I, I love it for myself. I love it for other people. I was like, I could teach you how to get stronger, leaner, faster, anything you want. So I started it a couple years ago, and I was like, damn, this is way too much. I was like, I cannot train and sit at a computer all day long. So I was doing individual emails and prescriptions for every single client. And I had like 30 to 40 clients. I was like, whoa, this is exhausting. So I shut it down. I told everybody, I was like, guys, I'm not giving you the attention you deserve mm -hmm. for the money you're paying mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So then I was just like, I, since then, two, in the past two years, there's all of these apps that you can basically design yourself as like a straight, like a Hunter McIntyre shop, Hunter's Academy of Strength. You can go to my app and literally go and you can either go through my Look Good Naked program, my running program, my like daily training. And it's just like, it's pretty easy. I design it and I sit down on my computer for a couple hours a week. I put it all down and I put it out there. People message me every single day and ask questions, but it's not nearly as involved as somebody who's like, hey, I just want you to know my hamstring's a little bit tweaked this week and like I, I'm my bike pirate tire popped. So like how can I change up with these workouts to do this? I was like like 15, 20 minute email to like come up with a new idea for them on the training plan. You do that with 30, 40 people a week, it gets crazy. Difficult to scale for yep. sure. Yeah. So I launched that business and it literally grew to like 320 members in four months. First month, I will tell you like I was ready to like string myself up. We didn't get any signups. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I am washed up. 
Nobody cares. I was <laughs> like, just... COVID is really taking us down a peg, Hunter. It's like, you are not hot shit anymore. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I don't know what the heck happened, but like mid-April, boom, signups popped up. And then all of a sudden, I gave everybody a $10 discount to $10 a month. It's called F the Virus. And I was just like, fuck the virus. I was like, I know you guys are having a hard time. My program is only $10 a month now. And then all of a sudden, numbers spiked. And then after I did that for a couple months, I brought it back up to the numbers that I thought were appropriate for the work I was putting in. And numbers are still growing. Oh, good. And uh, to be honest, dude, like that literally put the food back on the table. If it wasn't for that, I was like, holy crap. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, was, that's excellent. Now, any anything new in the future for you? Like, what are you looking to do moving ahead with all this? Um, you know what? I, as soon as this company's done, OCR Stars only runs for a month. I am literally going to go deeper into the mountains. Like, I'll probably get a place in like Yosemite, Big Bear, something like that. And I'm going to finish this book. Like, I swear, I've been doing it for too many years. I've been working too freaking hard. It's just probably only going to take about two months more worth of more work, and it'll be good. After that's done, I really am going to take all, invest about 50% of what I'm earning right now in my training company, and I'm hiring a full-time cameraman. And I was like, we're literally going to do all of the Hunter adventures, but now there's a red light on. Mm. I was like, we're going to fucking tear it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's all. I love hearing this, these kind of stories because so many people in our space need to hear how people are making it. And what they're doing, and hey, did does exercise and working out carry you through those hard moments? I know it does for me. When I'm feeling stressed out, I work out. And I feel so much better. Is it meditative for you in that sense? Hundred percent, dude. When everything got canceled, all my events got canceled. I literally was just sitting there, and I was like, I just t I bought a whiteboard at Target, old Target, and I put that thing up on the board, and I was like, What do I do? And I just started looking online. I was like, What's close? What's close? What's close? It's like Memorial Day, Murph. So I was like, I'm going to set the Murph world record. I gave myself two months of this, the most intense training cycle I've done to date. I gave myself like rhabdo on multiple days, joint pain that still doesn't allow me to sleep at night. And I just said, I'm going to do it. I was like, I'm not going to allow this to tie me to the ground. There's, there's no rock around my waist. I was like, I'm going to smash that thing and start running now. And I went for it. And it was just the carrot that was going to survive long enough to keep me busy and it kept me happy and it kept me focused and then then right after that was done i was like next goal and did I, you set the world record how, how did yeah, you do i got it i got it i wanted oh, to go wow. i wanted to go sub nice. 30 and i was close and then i overtrained myself i was within one minute of the record and then when i did the actual uh event i was four minutes behind the uh four minutes behind my goal i beat the record by four minutes but uh i'll tell you dude like I, I almost had too much focus and I was almost too intense on myself. I was like, if you're not going to go train and be a world champion, I was like, you're going to be a garage world champion now. It's like, you're just going <laughs> to Yo, murder yeah, yourself brother. daily. Yeah. And uh, I, I just, I talked about this recently. I believe very much so that having a goal in life is important, having some purpose and direction. But I also believe in like these micro goals. Like you just always have to have something. Mm -hmm. yep. You can't allow yourself to just even get through the day without having a goal. Take mm. us through a little bit of what that training looked like for Murph. I mean, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? I mean, it sounds like you you know you kind of overtrained a little bit. So you know, but what did you? Obviously, you did something right if you broke the record. Um, it started out two month training cycle that should have probably been spread out over six. Uh, I started out with a power like and strength block as like I hit every position with maximal strength. So I went through a squat cycle of like five reps, then three reps, then one rep, not five, three, one, but I did that like downward wave of intensity and I built up to like a heavy squat. I was like, I can move weight in this position. I can bench weight in this position. I can pull weight in this position. So structurally I was very strong and then I added intensity uh, no, and then I had endurance. Then I started just pumping reps into that thing. Like I was doing probably several thousand reps of squats, push ups, and pull ups a week. And then I added intensity. I just put a, like the, the last part of my block was literally take an EMOM clock. And I was like, you have to hit 25 push ups and 25 squats every single minute for 10 minutes with a mile on each side oh. and a weight vest on. <laughs> wow. And I was like, I just started to take things and I just started to take the workload and just start to make it tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. I was like, can you put all of that into a smaller box now of time? And if you spread that out over six months, you allow these ups and then a down, and then an up and then a down. Like you guys know the waves. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. I, Two months is just up. Yeah, just I can't up. see any downs. There's no downs. I, I think that was the problem. Like 
the structure of the design was perfect, but the implementation and the intensity was too much. And I, I probably would have done maybe two days a week of heavy calisthenics, five to six days a week of more heavy cardio, and maybe two days a week of heavy lifting, where I was hitting four heavy lifts a week, five days of calisthenics, and five days of cardio. Do you do what do you do for recovery and for for just re- rejuvenation? Because that's, I mean, uh, th- obviously you're a highly trained athlete. I'm sure there's a genetic component there as well. You seem to, you probably have a recovery ability mm-hmm. much higher than the average person. Yeah, you but probably I, need some interventions. I can't, yeah, I can't imagine though that you don't, uh, you know, do something to accelerate your healing process because that's just insane. Um, if I had the perfect world, uh, I'm doing those those pump up, uh, the leg pump ups things like Normatec. Yeah, those are right. great. Those mm-hmm. help out a ton. I was getting a massage twice a week when I had availability to a massage therapist. Um, I hang upside down all the time. Hanging upside down from those gravity boots, I'm telling you right now. Now, what, is, what do you get from that? Uh, lengthening your spine, adding uh, fluid to your spinal tissue, and uh, lengthening your joints, kind of separating things. Because as we stand, everything's compressing. Everything needs to decompress. People do yoga and stuff. I like that passive kind of lengthening. Honestly, if I go to a yoga class, it feels like somebody is taking me through some kind of Chinese torture. It hurts. Like, you know, when you just like try to get into pigeon, you're like, <gasps> like struggling to breathe. Like the skin, it feels like it's tearing. I'm tight because of the work that I do. Like sometimes like your body needs to be tight instead of supple. Mm-hmm. So I allow that lengthening of hanging to really help out. Like I'll hang for 10 to 20 minutes a day. And I wow. went from like six, two and a half down to six foot and three quarters after doing heavy CrossFit because of like just the the amount of disc, like my body was so bent. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How much, did you, yeah, really? how much height did you lose? About an inch and a half. Holy wow, cow. Yeah. And now when, you, when you're hanging, when you're doing the traction upside down like that, do you, get, do you gain it back? Do you oh know? yeah, dude. I mean, your body is able, your body, just like anything, can just get like knotted up. I mean, honestly, like, you ever seen somebody who's got lordosis, like that that backswing? Yep. Mm-hmm. Like stand there like all crooked like this? Either that or they're just posing for Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your body will naturally become like that. Your your hip flexors get so tight, your spine gets so uh, fucked up that your pelvic system tilts, actually. So now all of a sudden, instead of having this incredible alignment of bone structure, you're now using muscular and tendon tissue to kind of like hold you up. And it's like almost like someone's pulling a string backwards and loading you almost cocked. And uh, so that's been very helpful. Uh, I know that was a really long answer for just hanging upside down. Um, and dude, the one thing I have to say that I, I think is amazing for recovery is water. Like I will put a bet down cash that most of you guys do not hit a gallon every day. Yeah. And if if you're not hitting that, like I'm sitting right now here talking to you guys sweating just because my, I think my metabolism and my muscular system is just always running a little bit hotter. You also have a big furry poncho on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Might might have something to do with that. And you got a neck carpet. Yeah, right. That's really keeping you warm. (laughs) No, but like, even if I, dude, I lay, I'll sleep like naked on top of the bed at nighttime sweating. It's crazy. Dude, when I was training, this is crazy. When I was training for the CrossFit games, I was so overtrained and so beat up. I would... Literally take a wet shower, like cold shower. Obviously, it was a wet shower. It was a freezing, <laughs> freezing cold shower. And then I would wet my towel and then I would literally turn a fan on and I would take a protein jug that I'd filled with water and then frozen during the day. I would wrap it in the towel and I'd put it between my legs on my, like, you know, uh, femoral artery down here. And I would hold it like a little goose egg down there that would cool me down and just sleep naked on top of my sheets and everything because I would, my core temperature was just up. Mm-hmm. Like so fucked. That's yeah. crazy. You know, you mentioned your girlfriend a couple times. How how long have you guys been together? And is she how supportive is she about with all this insanity? Uh, you know what? I have to say, I'm not the easiest guy. Uh, she's been here with six months. She's my COVID queen. Basically, <laughs> I, COVID queen, COVID queen. Yeah. She. This is crazy. So I knew her for two years, a year before I actually started spending time with her. And I would go into this gym and I was training full time and I was like. I don't want to talk to anybody. And that's not usually my energy, but like, I just was like so intense and focused at the time. She thought I was a total asshole. And then I was dating another girl at the time and she was dating somebody else. I was like, that girl's beautiful, but you know, off limits. Uh, so I just like, I stayed away. I just know that there's no point in touching hot coals unless you want ready to get your hand burnt. So I just stayed away from her. And then all of a sudden I broke up with my last girlfriend and within like a couple weeks, I just, I turned on a dating app just to see, it was like, what's it like out here? Boom. 
DM from her, and I was like, oh, I was like that's that pretty girl from the gym. So we meet up, and we have a great date. It was the, my birthday. I invited her to my birthday party. It was a pirate party. It was pretty sick. And, oh, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. A pirate party? We all dressed up like pirates. Everybody dressed up like normal pirates, and I dressed up as a space pirate. All my friends were so pissed. They're like, what the fuck? You're supposed to be a pirate. I was like, pirate from outer space, bitch. So I just wore an astronaut yeah, outfit naturally. with an eye patch. Yeah. Sick outfit. Oh, yeah. And it's totally what I would have done. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up, uh, this is a funny story. Uh, this is not a PG story. I was so high on mushrooms and beer at the time when she came to meet me at the bar. I was just like out of it. She came to like talk to me. I was like, get away from me. I can't, I can't. I was like, I'm just, I'm too high. So then I go run outside with, after the bar closed, I go up to her and I was like, come home. We'll just go hang out and party at the house for a bit. And she didn't get in the Uber with us because it was fully packed. I was like, sit on my lap. She's like, no, I can't do that. So I was like, I gave her my address. I typed in the wrong address. Oh. So she shows up. <laughs> so the next day I text, I text her. I'm like, what happened to you? I was like, we had such a fun night. She's like, I showed up at your house and you guys weren't there. And I was like, what do you mean? I go back to the text, totally wrong address. So she shows up to a house in the middle of the night and tries to open the door. So I was embarrassed. I was like, I'll make it up to you. So I took her out to ice cream for the next night. Had a great date. Then I went and flew to New York City to go uh, tell, uh, surprise my dad for his 65th birthday. It was March 10th. And I show up and then all of a sudden, like I'm in a gym working out with somebody and my buddy is like, yo, dude, look what my friend just sent me. And I was like, what? He goes, dude, this is from uh, one of the, you know, the broadcasters at CNN. They're like, they're about to shut down New York City because this COVID thing. I was like, what COVID thing are you talking about? He's like, you know that disease from from China? I was like, what? <laughs> and China. The China disease. China. I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And then all of a sudden, like, my family starts contacting me. I have this ridiculous text from my dad. He's like, he's like, we're going upstate. He's like, leave with us now. I'm like, what are you talking <laughs> the about? Zombies are coming. The zombies Apocalypse. Are coming. So I literally caught an overnight flight back to Colorado, and I was like, holy. Holy shit. And it was like all unraveling. They're like, the United States is going into lockdown. It's like, everybody must stay six feet away from each other. Do not leave the house for the next two yeah. weeks. Do not smile. Yeah, it was fucking freaky. So then I called this girl over for a date and I'm like, listen, this sounds really weird, but I, the world's about to change. And I was like, you're my plus one. I was like, we're about to go on lockdown. And I was like, I can only have one person in the house besides my house, uh, besides myself, my roommate said. I was like, you're my plus one. And I was like, you're by my side for the next like, X amount of months until this goes over. And we immediately spent like every single day together from this point on till t today. And it was like, I basically wow. shot that to her. I was like, I know you don't know me well, but we're in lockdown now. I was like, the world's about to end. Great angle. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it worked. We're going to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Romantically. I know. Yeah. So that was a crazy way. We might just... die tomorrow, so we should have sex. The yes, day. exactly. That's those... exactly how it yeah. worked out. So she she became my COVID queen, dude. She's been by my, my side. We've traveled the country. We've done a lot of incredible stuff. She's a great girl. Um, I'm really well supported. And as I said, I'm not the easiest guy. I'm an absolute madman. Like mm. I, anytime I come up with an idea, I could call her. I'm like, I'm like, we're waking up at 3 a.m. tomorrow and we're driving to San Jose. She's like, what? I was like, just don't ask questions. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're here now. Oh, R ride or die. That I sounds great. I like to hear that. So yeah, that's yeah. good. So only six months. So it's new in the relationship. It's but. new, man. Yeah. I'm realizing as I'm getting a little bit older and I'm definitely not like wise. You guys got more experience than I do, but I'm just realizing that you guys are old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're, you're just a little bit wiser than I am. You guys all have families. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like, you know, the thing is, I don't know when all of a sudden it's just going to take off and happen, but like, I'm just having fun. My last girlfriend, I think I was just a little too serious. And I thought like, you know, I was like, this is the time. I was like, we should just level up and start to like move in together and like maybe get married and stuff. And like that actually built more pressure on what I thought the relationship could have been. Now I'm just like, Fuck it. I was like, if the wind blows, I'm going with it. And if she follows, I'm she, you know, it's gonna be great. Um, so I'm I'm happy to have a girl by my side and uh, you know, it could be until the day that I die or it could be until tomorrow. Yeah. I don't really care. That's awesome, awesome dude. Right. Well, dude, you're always a blast, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. always fun to have you come in. <laughs> oh and, yeah, 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 yeah. And hear you talking often, and uh man. yeah, till next time I guess. But uh, again, always fun to have you on. I'll make sure that we put your your what you're donating or where people can go to help donate to your cause. I think that's a great yeah, cause. It's a Thanks, brother, man. Thing. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, bro. Appreciate We're it. Pumped to be here, guys. <laughs> if you ever think to yourself, like, man, we should have government do more stuff, go to the DMV, because that'll be a good <laughs> yeah. a good reminder of why you don't. Just to find forms and fill them out and then go to different uh, locations within just one building. It's just a wonderful example of uh, just complete inefficiency and redundancy. And